57-year-old Darren Perto of Chico, California, who lived with the body of his dead roommate for four years, has been charged with stealing his money by writing dozens of checks on his account. Darren is said to have forged checks to himself from the credit union account of 64-year-old Kevin Olson, who hadn't been seen since October of 2018. On the 21st of September, Kevin's body was found on the floor of the back bedroom of his home, located at 2612 Burnap Avenue. The authorities searched the home after a missing person investigation started in August, after a relative told police he hadn't seen or heard from Kevin for about four years. Relatives said they tried over the years to contact Kevin and spoke to Darren. He gave various excuses for his absence. A Chico police officer who contacted Darren was told that Kevin was out of town. Kevin was retired from the United States Navy, and his monthly retirement checks were sent directly to his Navy Federal Credit Union account, where his mortgage was still being paid. The authorities said that from July of 2019, Darren allegedly forged about 50 checks on the account. The investigators believe that Kevin died in late 2018. An autopsy will be held to determine his cause of death. On the 26th of September, Darren was charged with forgery and identity theft. The investigation into the matter continues. A man was arrested last week after the authorities say he stabbed his girlfriend before dumping her remains. The investigators said that on the 17th of September, 63-year-old Bruce Paul stabbed 53-year-old Kelly Logan during an argument in the bedroom of their apartment at the Hampshire House apartment complex, located on the corner of Park Heights Avenue and Menlo Drive in Baltimore, Maryland. At 1.45pm on the 21st of September, the authorities received reports of a suspicious death and responded to an area underneath a light rail bridge located along the 2100 block of Clayman Street where they located Kelly's body in thick brush. She had been stabbed multiple times in the head and neck. The police said that Bruce dumped the body there with the help of two other people. It's unclear whether the individuals that assisted in disposing of Kelly's remains will be charged. Court documents state that the video surveillance from the apartment's complex shows Bruce leaving the building with bagged remains of Kelly inside a shopping cart. The investigators said that Bruce's family members sought to turn him into police. Officers showed up at Bruce's apartment and took him in for questioning, We later confessed to the fatal stabbing. Bruce faces a number of charges, including first-degree murder, assault, and tampering with evidence. He's been held at the Central Booking and Intake Centre in downtown Baltimore. The investigation into the matter continues. A narcotics investigation in Redding, California, has led authorities to large fentanyl and firearm seizures, and the arrest of 45-year-old Michael Myers. On the 28th of September, the authorities performed a traffic stop on Michael's white Nissan Altima around the North Court Street and Riverside Drive intersection on suspicion of delivering fentanyl to various locations in Reading. A search of Michael's car revealed multiple bags of suspected fentanyl packages for sale and distribution. The authorities then completed a search of Michael's home in the 1800 block of Delma Avenue where they found an additional 12 ounces of fentanyl, cocaine, meth, and various other items associated with narcotic sales, illegal firearms, firearm parts, high-capacity magazines and ammunition. The authorities said they located a metal safe containing fentanyl and a large amount of cash. The Shasta Internal Agency Narcotics Task Force responded and seized the money, as it suspected to be the proceeds of illegal drug distribution in Reading. Michael was arrested and charged with possession of narcotics for sales and possession of a controlled substance for sale and is held at the Chester County Jail. The Reading Police said that additional charges will be sought against Michael for numerous weapon-related offences. 21-year-old Delina Collier has been arrested for setting a number of houses on fire. The Memphis Fire Department said that a series of arson attacks occurred in the South Memphis, Tennessee area. The Fire Department responded to eight fires within a three-month period. Five of the fires occurred in the same street with four occurring within days of each other. The authorities said the fires were set using combustible materials. The damages from the fires cost almost $290,000. During the investigation, Delina was identified as a suspect. Witnesses reported Delina telling them that she committed arson because there were evil spirits in the houses she set on fire. On the 26th of September, she was booked into the Shelby County Jail and was charged with arson. Her bond was set at $5,000 as the investigation into the matter continues. The police are investigating a homicide that occurred in the Southmore apartment complex in St. Louis, Missouri. 
The incident occurred at 2.12pm on the 26th of September, when officers responded to an apartment in the 5500 block of Gulf Ridge Lane on reports of shots fired. When officers arrived, they located two women that had been shot. One woman, identified as 21-year-old Janice King, was pronounced dead at the scene, while the other woman, who's not been named, was transported to an area hospital for treatment of non-life-threatening injuries and was later released. Police said the shooting is a result of an argument between familiar parties. So far, no arrests have been made. The authorities are trying to identify a suspect responsible for the recent fatal shooting of a young woman and her infant daughter. The incident occurred at around 7.20am on the 24th of September, when the authorities responded to a residence in the 2500 block of South Fruit Avenue in Fresno, California, regaining a report of multiple gunshots heard within a bedroom of the house. When officers arrived, they made contact with several family members outside the residence, they said they heard gunshots inside the bedroom where 18-year-old Janelli Solerio Rodriguez and her three-week-old infant daughter Celine Solerio Rivera were located. Upon entering the bedroom, they found Janelli and Celine unresponsive and each suffering from multiple gunshot wounds to their upper body. Despite the best efforts of the paramedics, they were pronounced dead at the scene. Homicide detectives responded to the scene to take over the investigation. Police said detectives are working with the family as well as searching for witnesses and video surveillance in hopes of identifying the suspect. Fresno Police Chief Parco Baldarama released a statement about the homicide, saying that all acts of murder are unacceptable in our community, but when the victim's an innocent three-week-old infant, it becomes indescribably horrendous and completely unacceptable. This senseless crime has not only deeply impacted the lives of the family, but every single first responder on this horrific scene. Our officers and detectives are diligently working to identify those responsible, and we will not rest until that occurs and bring justice to the family, the chief said. At this point, no suspect information has been obtained, and detectives are asking for anyone with information to contact the Fresno Police Department. 20-year-old Hannah Esser is behind bars after she allegedly fatally struck a man on purpose in order to save a cat she believed he was trying to run over. The incident occurred at around 8.23pm on the 25th of September, along the 9,700 block of Graham Street in Cypress, California, when Hannah got out of the car and confronted the victim, later identified as 43-year-old Victor Anthony Luis. She reportedly recorded the interaction and thought he was trying to hit the cat in the middle of the street. According to the authorities, Hannah got out of her vehicle, yelled profanities at Victor, and accused him of trying to run over the cat. As Victor tried to speak to Hannah, she got back into a vehicle. She continued to argue with Victor before driving off. Instead of continuing to drive away from Victor and out of the area, she made a three-point turn and drove back towards him in the direction of the cul-de-sac. She then made a U-turn, accelerated and drove directly at him. It's claimed that Hannah then intentionally accelerated into Victor so hard that he was launched into the air. Victor landed on the hood of the car on the windshield his body flipping several times before he landed on the pavement. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Kimberly Eds, a spokesperson for the Orange County District Attorney's Office, said Hannah may have inadvertently framed herself by recording a confrontation with Victor on her cell phone. The circumstances leading up to the confrontation are still under investigation, she said. If convicted, Hannah faces a maximum sentence of 25 years to life in prison. Orange County District Attorney Todd Spitzer said, this action showed a complete disregard for human life. The Orange County District Attorney's Office will ensure that this random act of violence targeting a stranger will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, and is scheduled to appear in court for her arraignment on the 13th of October. She remains in the Orange County Jail in lieu of $1 million bail. 26-year-old Martre Oliver was taken into custody by U.S. Marshals on the night of the 27th of September in Renton, Washington, in connection with the murder of his twin brother Martis Oliver. At 3.24am on the 25th of September, Martis was found fatally shot outside Howard Johnson Hotel, around the intersection of Northeast Sandy Boulevard and 82nd Avenue in Portland, Oregon. The medical examiner determined Martis's cause of death was a gunshot wound and ruled his death a homicide. Brenda, a neighbour who lives near the hotel, said that she heard the gunshots. I was asleep and I heard a couple of gunshots, and then I heard a car zoom off. A few minutes later, there were police cars everywhere, she said. 
Police did not immediately release additional details about the circumstances that led to the shooting. Martre was charged with second-degree murder and unlawful use of a weapon. A woman has been charged with beating a friend and former landlord to death with a hammer after he discovered she had stolen over $40,000 from him by forging his checks. 43-year-old Zhu Fang Ki was arrested on the 28th of September after 65-year-old Lena Garber was found beaten to death inside his Mount Vernon Terrace home in West Newton, Massachusetts. Leonard's family reported him missing on the 26th of September. A police said they didn't spot his body during a welfare check that night. When Leonard's family reflagged their concerns, officers returned on the morning of the 27th of September, but still couldn't find him. They returned once again that afternoon at 3pm, where a bloodstain led detectives to Leonard's body, which was found wrapped in a curtain buried beneath construction material and other heavy objects in the front hallway of the home. The authorities said that it appears that Leonard's remains may have been inside the house for in excess of a day, stating that his body had been placed in such a way as to conceal it. Sue's a former tenant of Leonard's at another property, and they had become friends. The investigators learnt that Leonard and Zoo had been spending time together, and she had been allegedly forging checks from her former landlord's accounts. When Leonard had become aware that Zoo had stolen more than $40,000 from him, he confronted her, and she fatally struck him, the authorities said. Leonard was reportedly last seen on his home security camera, entering the house on the 22nd of September. Law enforcement say the same camera caught Zoo entering the home that same night, then again two days later with plastic gloves and a brown paper bag, just days before his body was discovered. The state medical examiner is conducting an autopsy, but preliminary indications are that the cause of death is blunt force trauma, the authorities said. During an interview at the Newton Police Department on the 28th of September, Zoo allegedly admitted that she had stolen checks from Leonard, that she killed him using a hammer. Zoo is charged with murder, and she's held without bond as the investigation into the matter continues. 31-year-old Tyron Bell is in custody after fatally shooting 32-year-old Devon Trice in a seemingly random attack. The incident occurred at around 2.15pm on the 28th of September at the Southside Barber and Beauty Salon located at 4264 Manchester Avenue in St. Louis, Missouri. The authorities said a man walked in off the street and shot Devon inside the shop for no reason. After shooting Devon, a suspect remained at the scene until police arrived and he was detained. Charles Lovett, a friend of Devon, believes that the shooter may have mistakenly thought that Devon was reaching into his pocket for a gun instead of his phone. Major Ryan Cousins from the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department said he walked in for no reason. The victim was shot. Stranger on stranger, we think there might be some mental issues involved. We don't normally have these kinds of incidents around here. It's a kind of entertainment area. As far as shootings are concerned, this is an anomaly for the area, he said. A suspect will undergo a psychological evaluation to see if he's fit to stand trial for the murder. 32-year-old Gerard Rakeem Sanders is behind bars in connection to the fatal shooting of 37-year-old Christopher Yakem. At around 8.50pm on the 28th of September, the authorities responded to an apartment at 2119 South Michigan Street in South Bend, Indiana, on reports of shots fired. When officers arrived at the scene, they observed a woman yelling, my boyfriend was shot. The officers could see the door to the apartment on the north side of the residence slightly ajar and made entry to find an individual, later identified as Christopher Yakem, lying on the ground just inside the door. He was unresponsive, but breathing, and had blood coming from his abdomen. The medics arrived to attempt life-saving measures, and he was rushed to a local hospital, but he died a short time later. Officers noticed three bullet holes in the front door, and three spent shell casings outside the residence. The shooting reportedly stemmed from a dispute about an hour earlier, between Christopher and his girlfriend at a gas station. She then called Gerard for a ride back to her apartment, where she lived with Christopher. She said that once they arrived at the residence, Christopher was there, and Gerard pulled out a gun, and was holding it in his hand when he exited his vehicle, and he confronted Christopher. At the time, Christopher was on the porch on the north side of the building. The woman explained that Christopher and Gerard argued outside the apartment. As Christopher turned to walk inside, Gerard became angry and told Christopher not to turn his back on him. Christopher walked inside his apartment and closed the door. Gerard then reportedly fired three shots at the door that Christopher just entered, before fleeing the scene in his vehicle and heading north along Main Street. 
The woman then went to check up on Christopher when police arrived. Gerard was arrested on the 29th of September in Bering County, Michigan, where he's awaiting extradition to Indiana. He's held without bail and is charged with murder and firearm enhancement. If convicted on both charges, he could face up to 85 years in prison. 35-year-old Nicholas Jamez Hernandez is in custody after being accused of killing five people in a small Texas town. At around 8am on the 29th of September, the authorities responded to a home located at 903 South Monroe Street in McGregor, Texas on reports of a domestic disturbance. Nicholas fatally shot his wife Monica Delgado and her two children, 15-year-old Miguel Avila and 14-year-old Natalie Avila. The suspect is not their father. Monica had three other children ages 8, 6 and 4. The victims also included two other women, one who was found in the street and the other found inside a nearby home. They were identified as 47-year-old Laurie Arviles and a 20-year-old daughter Natalie Arviles, who were neighbours of the murder mother and children and had gone to the house after hearing gunshots. When officers arrived, Nicholas returned fire as police responded to the scene. He was shot and wounded and transported to a local hospital and was transferred to jail the following day. He's charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and more charges are pending, the authorities said. The motive of the shooting is unclear. McGregor Mayor Jimmy Herring said, This terrible and senseless act of violence has devastated our town. While the families are notified of the details, we we'll ask that you keep them, the officers and the community of McGregor in your thoughts and prayers. We'll keep the public informed as investigative facts are confirmed, he said.